Hello grade 11s and grade 12 students, this exam question can be useful for both grades. Please remember to subscribe for more videos like this. This is obviously an acid-base question. Let's do it. So we've got ammonia can readily dissolve in water according to the following equation. They give you the equation. However, setting up this equation yourself is something that you need to be able to do. So they first say explain why a hydroxide ion, which is this one over here, hydroxide ion, is regarded as a lowry bronsted base. Now, this is essentially asking you what is the definition of a lowry bronsted or a bronsted lowry base. So remember, bronsted lowry called bases proton acceptors. And this hydroxide ion over here has the ability to accept a proton. Think about it. If it accepts a proton, remember, proton is a H plus, what will it form? It will form. H, so it was one H, it gets another H, so H2O, and it was just negatively charged. If it accepts a positive, it's going to be neutral. So basically, that is your reason. You're basically defining a Lowry Bronsted base. Bases are proton acceptors and acids are proton donors. Our next question says identify the type of bond, bond responsible for the formation of the ammonium ion in the above equation. Remember, this is ammonia and this is the ammonium ion. This is more for the grade 11s. They don't really ask this in grade 12, but remember it is a dative covalent bond. And they don't in this question ask for this, but they could ask you to draw Lewis dot diagrams to show the formation of the dative covalent bond. So this is ammonia in H3. And if you draw the Lewis dot diagram for this, you see that there's a lone pair of electrons over here. Now what happens is an H plus ion has empty orbitals. Remember, hydrogen only has one electron in its outer orbital. If it's a positive, it means it has given that electron away. So it has an empty 1s orbital. Not too important to remember, but essentially what that means is that both of these lone, these electrons, this lone pair, are shared with the H plus, with the proton, and then it forms the ammonium ion. And this arrow just indicates that both of these electrons, this lone pair, is shared with the hydrogen over there and overall it has a positive charge so use a square bracket overall positive charge they don't don't ask for it in this question but they can in an exam 8.3 says write a balanced equation always balance your equations to show how the amphalite in the above equation will act as a base when it reacts with hydrochloric acid so if you take a look at this equation ammonia as we know is a weak base Remember, bases are proton acceptors. And if you take a look at what's happening here, NH3 becomes NH4. How did it do that? It gained a proton, which means it accepted a proton, so it's a base. That means that in this reaction, H2O is an acid. It's always an acid-base reaction. And does it make sense? Yes, because acids are proton donors. And if H2O donates or gets rid of an H+, you're going to be left with this over here, OH-. So in this reaction over here, water is an acid, it's reacting with the base. Amphalites, remember, are substances that can act either as an acid or a base, depending on what it reacts with. So water is a very well-known good amphalite. They say, um, show how the amphalite will act as a base when it reacts with HCl. So if we take HCl, and we react it with water, which as we know is a good amphalite, then this will then be the base. This will then be the acid, hydrochloric acid. It's a strong acid. And how will the rest of the equation look? Well, remember, acids are proton donors. So it's going to give away an H plus to my base. What will be left over once this donates an H plus? Cl minus. Why minus? Because it was neutral and now it's giving away a positive. If you give away a positive, you become negative. And remember, it will give that proton to the water. So it was H2O. Now it's going to be H3O. But you must remember your plus because it was neutral, but now it's gaining a proton, a positive. So it's going to have an overall positive charge. And that's essentially what they want from you in this question. Just as a quick reminder, HCl is my acid. When it gives away, when it donates, acids are proton donors. When it donates its proton, it's going to form a conjugate base. 
So Cl minus is my conjugate base. H2O is my base. It's going to accept. It's a proton acceptor. And then it's going to form a conjugate acid. Just remember conjugate base, acid base pairs. It can come up in grade 11 and grade 12. My next few questions are involving stoichiometry, but first we have a definition. I'm not even going to read the question yet. Let's just get the definition out the way. Define the term concentration. Here are the accepted definitions for concentration, but if you ever forget the definition, remember C is equal to N over V. Look at your formula sheet. N is number of moles of solute, moles of solute. When we divide, it's per, and then this is volume or per cubic decimeter or per liter of solution so it's moles of solute per cubic decimeter remember volume is measured in cubic decimeters and one cubic decimeter if you've forgotten is equal to one liter so the amount of solute the moles of the solute per liter or per cubic decimeter of solution my next question involves some stoichiometry. We've got five cubic decimeters of nitric acid. Okay, so we've got an acid. The initial volume of that acid is five cubic decimeters. It must always be in cubic decimeters. This is HNO3 with a concentration of 0 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter. Please learn your units because if they didn't say concentration, if they said of... So they didn't say the word concentration. You need to be able to look at this and know that they mean concentration based on the unit. They say it's spilled accidentally in a small pond of water. Then after they spill it, the acid and water has a total volume of 1000 cubic decimeters. So we've got acid before it's spilled with the following volume and the following concentration. And then we've got the after the spill, once it's spilled into the pond, after the spill, the total volume is 1000 thousand cubic decimeters let's see what they say calculate the concentration of the acid after it was spilled in the pond now this is essentially a dilution question so we have an acid and it has a particular volume five cubic decimeters we can work out the moles which i'll do in a second then we spill that acid with that number of moles into a larger volume of water and because it is entering a much larger volume of water the concentration is going to change so the bigger we make the volume think about the formula c equals n over v the bigger we make the volume so as volume increases over here the concentration will decrease it'll get less concentrated that's why it's called a dilution so there's two ways to do this the one way is that we can first work out the number of moles of the acid before we spill it. Okay, so we can go, here's my information. We can go C is equal to N over V. My concentration is 0, 0,75. My N is what I'm looking for and my volume is 5. Then we get the number of moles of acid, 3,75 mole. Now, remember in a dilution question, the number of moles does not change. We change the volume, which changes the concentration, but the number of moles does not change. So this is the number of moles. Okay, It's going to stay the same after we spill it in the pond. So I'm going to say after C is equal to N over V. We're looking for the new concentration. So I'm looking for C after I spill it. N is going to be 3,75. That does not change. But my volume is a new volume. It's this volume. Read the question carefully. It says volume of 1,000 when the acid and the water are together. So this is 1,000. And we get 3,75 times 10 to the negative 3 because times 10 to the negative 3 is same as divide by 1,000. So if your calculator sets in scientific notation, it'll give it to you like that. Or you'll get it like that. Remember your units. My next question says use calculations. It's six marks, so of course we need to use calculations to determine if 120 grams of calcium hydroxide, that is a base over here, will be sufficient, will be enough to react completely with all the acid in the pond. So we want to know if all the acid in the pond will be used up, reacted, if I add 120 grams of calcium hydroxide. Now there's different ways to do this. How I would do this is I would first, I would ignore the 120 for now, and I would work out 
how much or how many grams of calcium hydroxide will react if I want to use up all the acid. So I'm asking myself, if I want to use up all the acid in the pond or react completely all the acid in the pond, how much calcium hydroxide do I need? If I get 120 grams or more, then obviously, then then it's not going to be enough. Okay, but if I need 100 grams, then 120 will be enough. I hope that makes sense. So how would you do this? Well, what you would need to do is you would first need to work out the moles of my acid. Then you would need to use a mole ratio to get the moles required of calcium hydroxide. And then you would convert it to mass and you can compare that mass with this mass. So here are the steps that I just mentioned. And let's start with step number one. I know we already calculated the moles of HNO3. I'm just going to do it again to remind you. We can calculate the moles of HNO3 using the original volume and the original concentration. Or we can calculate it using the new volume and the new concentration. Remember, mole stays the same after I spill the acid. So it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use the original 0.75 moles and five and remember we get my moles as being 3,75 moles and that is of HNO3. That's step one. Then to get from moles of HNO3 to moles of calcium hydroxide to get from one thing in my balanced chemical equation to another I have to use a mole ratio. You always need to tell your marker or your teacher or whatever what is going into your mole ratio. So HNO3 to CaOH2. Make sure your equation is balanced. Mine is balanced. And the mole ratio comes from these big numbers here. So 2 to 1 ratio. What we know are the moles of HNO3. So 3,75. And we want to work out these moles. How do you get from 2 to 1? You divide by 2. So you're going to have to divide this by 2. Therefore, the moles of calcium hydroxide that will be needed in order to use all the acid is 1,875 moles. Don't round off yet. You're not at the end of the question. Now, just keep in mind what this means. In 3,75 moles is the total moles of acid in the pond. If we want to react all of this, if we want to use all of this up, we need 1.875 moles of calcium hydroxide. How much mass is that? So we convert that back to mass. So moles of CaOH2. We use baby M over big M. Remember moles, we just calculated 1.875. The mass is what I'm looking for. Big M comes from the periodic table. You look at calcium. We've got two oxygens and two hydrogens. It's 74 in total. That means that the mass that is required to react all of the acid in the pond is 138,75 grams. But remember what the question said in the beginning. I have 120 grams. So 120 is less than 138.75. Therefore, 120 grams is not enough. Not enough or insufficient Okay, so we did step one, we did step two, mole ratio, converted it back to mass, and then we have to compare for our final marks. You have to write a conclusion. I hope that this question has been helpful. Please comment down below if you'd like more like this. Subscribe for more physics, chemistry, mass videos, and I can't wait to see you very soon. Bye, everyone.